we have a reaction between sulfuric acid in a solution with sodium hydroxide. So again, it's also titrations, there's also questions that follow it from it. So with this one, we have the reaction. We have the reaction between the reaction between sulfuric acid. Now, I already know that sulfuric acid is corrosive. It's a very strong acid. It neutralizes completely because it can dissociate completely in water and, 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 and. I must stop talking and writing because I really can't multitask. H2SO4, there we are. Solution. Solution and sodium. Sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide remember sodium hydroxide is NaOH I think the previous one also used NaOH right dun, 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 dun. you can already see the common trend of all the things that the the, the solutions that they are, are actually using and this reaction is investigated it is investigated now what do they want us to do the first question, and this is a DBE question, it's a 2018 paper and it's a June exam. It says, it says write, it says write the name, it says write the name, write the name of the experiment, experiment, the experimental procedure and now there's actually a picture here and the picture is a picture of a burette there's a flask they're showing us that they're pouring the acid and so forth right so there's a diagram of a of a of a, of a burette so now here they're telling us write down the name of the experimental procedure so now remember if you go to the doctor and you went to get your brain checked you can actually say i went to a neurologist right? And if you're taking a car and you're spinning around in circles, you don't say spinning around in circles, you're making a donut, right? So everything we do has got a name for that procedure. So it's the same thing. When we take sulfuric acid in a solution of sodium hydroxide, we don't call this experimental procedure mixing or experimenting. No, there's a name for it. And the fact that they've given us a diagram with a burette and a flask, there's a base, there's an acid and so forth, it means it is titration. Titration is when we are trying to neutralize a base using an indicator, right? And I showed you the diagram and so forth. So with this one, name the experimental procedure, it is called titration. It's called titration. Some people also call it volumeric, volumeric analysis. So just in case they ask you, what is volumeric analysis? And they don't write titration there, you know volumeric analysis is titration. It's just another fancier word of saying it. Now, what is the function of a burette? What is the function? What is the function of a burette? What is the function of a burette? And I wanna go back to you mixing your special drink in the kitchen. You have your glass of water, you have your teaspoon, and you're pouring the concentrated drink on the teaspoon, then in the water, so that you measure it correctly and you know how many teaspoons you actually put in the water to give you that perfect drink. A burette allows us to measure the exact amount of the acid required to neutralize the base. Your teaspoon allows you to get the exact amount of, this, of, the, of the concentrated drink in the water so that your juice tastes exactly the same each and every time. When we use a burette, we get the exact amount of the amount of acid that needs to neutralize the brace so that in each and every time, if we use the, sol the same moles and the same volume, we can get the same results. So a burette, like a teaspoon when you're making your drink, will help us to measure It'll help us to measure the exact, a very important word, exact volume of the acid needed, of acid needed to reach the end point. And remember, end point and when you have that light pink, or oh, it's the acid needed 
to neutralize to neutralize the base. You see what I did there? I spoke about the volume, I spoke about the acid, that we are trying to neutralize them. I didn't say it is when um, the, the, the function of a burette is for us to reach endpoint. There is no, there's no, there's no conjunction there. Endpoint, burette, no. The burette helps us to reach the endpoint by doing what? By helping us get the, the exact amount or the exact volume of the acid needed to reach the end point. So make sure that you get those word, those wordings correct. It's actually very easy marks. I see that this is actually for one mark in the exam. So now we have here, define an acid in terms of Arrhenius' theory. I'm just gonna write done, because we've already looked at that, done a lot. Arrhenius' theory says it will donate an H+, where the lowry Brown's theory says that it will form the H3O plus in solution. So let's look at the next question. Here we have, give a reason why sulfuric acid is regarded as a strong, is a strong acid. Now I'm also gonna say done on this one. I wanna take you back on this slide here, just in case you've just joined us. But sure, we've actually worked a lot today. If I look at this one here, or is it this one? Okay, I think, oh there, there we are. So why is sulfuric acid regarded as a strong acid is because sulfuric acid, we can start off there as H2SO4 and we can ionize it completely until we have SO4 to minus. So remember, if something is a strong acid, it means that it ionizes completely. If something is a weak acid or a weak base, like how we saw in the previous question, it'll partially ionize, but not completely, right? And so if something ionizes completely, it readily, it, um, um, has these H pluses um, in solution. But if something ionizes partially, it doesn't really give off, you know, yeah, no. But if something is strong, it really goes for, goes for it. So let's look at the next question that we actually have. This is actually a nice question paper. Let's look at the next question. So now we, they've given us a reaction. We need to calculate something. So we have a question that says, during the titration, during the titration, we have a learner, we have a learner that adds, I'm somewhere gonna work here, so I have space there, 25 cubic centimeters of NaOH, and there's with a concentration, concen Concentration with the concentration of 0 0.1. Concentration is always in mole per cubic decimeter. As you can see, it's exactly the same thing the whole time to a flask. So this is what they're doing to a flask and titrates, titrates, and it titrates this solution, titrates this solution with, again, we're using H2SO4, dun, 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 as you've seen, we have, we've been using sulfuric acid of concentration, of concentration 0 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter. Now, they've actually given us an equation here, and our equation is NaOH, and there's a two there, they've actually even balanced it out for us, which is phenomenal. And this is plus H2SO4. It's also an aqueous solution. Uh, oops, there is it, and then I must have an arrow here. And then I have my salt, which is Na2SO4, also an aqueous solution. And then you have your water, H2O, and that is an Oh, so now what the question wants us to do, they want us to determine, they want us to determine the volume. They want us to determine the volume, the volume of H2SO4 that is needed, that is needed to neutralize that's needed to neutralize the Na 
OH completely. Okay, I'm gonna write work down here. So for the NaOH, what do I have? I'm given a volume and my volume is 25 cubic centimeters. I'm given a concentration, which is 0 0.1. Let me see, under my H2SO4, I'm only given the concentration, which is 0 0.1. And remember, concentration is in mole per cubic decimeter. I also have mole per cubic decimeter on this side. And they want me to calculate my volume. Right, and like I said before, if you have to calculate volume and they didn't say that you must convert it to cubic decimeter, you can calculate the whole thing and just not convert anything. And then maybe at the end, if you need to, convert it then to cubic decimeter. But in this case, this question doesn't say anything. It just says determine the volume of the H2SO4. So this is the, this is the formula we're going to use. So I'm going to show you two methods of doing it. This is the first one. So most teachers like using the, this one, but it also depends on you. I also am somebody who likes taking the long way around. So you can use CA, so that's the concentration for your acid, the volume for your acid all over, the concentration for your base, and the volume for your base equals to the moles of your acid over the moles of your base. Now, I'm here. I'm going to use all that I'm given and leave out what I don't have. Let's look at my mole ratio. I've got a 2 there, and if there's nothing there, there's an invisible 1. So my acid, which is my sulfuric acid, I do have the concentration. I replace the CA with 0, 0,1. I don't have the, the volume for my acid, so that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the volume for my acid. All over, the concentration for my base is 0, 0,1. The volume for my base is 25. The moles for my acid, there was nothing there. It's an invisible one. The moles for my base is a 2. I'm going to do it the long way. I'm going to cross multiply. That will multiply with that new, uh, denominator. This numerator will multiply with that denominator. 1 multiplied by that will give me 0 0.1. 25 times 1, so it will remain. Here I'm going to have 2 multiplied by 0 0.1, and I don't have the volume for my acid. If I want VA on its own, I'm going to divide both sides with what is irritating the VA. In this case, I must divide both sides by 2, 0, 0,1. What to do on this side, you do on this side. If you must buy a Mother's Day present, you must buy a Father's Day present. So you only don't do it on the one side, you have to do it on both. This and this will cancel. I'm going to have the value of VA. Let me see what I get. Let's get our calculator ready. So I have at the top of my equation, I have 0 0.1, close my bracket, multiply that by 25, by 25, close my bracket. At the bottom, I have 2 multiplied by 0 0.1, get an equa equal sign, and then I get the volume for my acid as 12.5, and remember your answer is in cubic centimeters, right? If you had to do get it to cubic decimeters, then you'll then divide this answer by 1,000, and then you'll get it in cubic decimeters, right? That is, the f that's the one method that you can actually use. But then I actually want to show you guys another method that you can use. Um, let's see. Let me somewhat erase this one so that you guys can keep with me so I don't have to move from the slide. But that's the one method. I really hope you wrote this down. But I'm just thinking, then I don't have to go back and forth with slides. But or, remember, let me just summarize or here. So this is another method. So I always teach my kids both, actually. So in this side, I have the only unknown I don't have here is my moles. Here, I don't have volume, and I don't have my moles. I only have one unknown. I have two unknowns. I've got more information by the NaOH than I do have for the, for, from the sulfuric acid. So what you can do is you can say the concentration of your NaOH, which is C, which is N over V. Concentration is always N over V, which is N over V. I have my concentration, which is 0, 0,1. I don't have my moles, so I'm going to keep that as N. I'm given my volume, which is 25. Let's solve for N over 1, cross multiply. So N is equal to 0, 0.1 times 25. Let's see what we get here. If I say 
0 0.1 multiplied by 25, I get 2.5. So I'm going to get my moles, my N, as 2.5. Now I want to take you here. I've got a ratio of 2 is to 1. 2 is to 1. If, I, if this represents 2 moles for this side, I need to divide it by 2 to get the value of 1. Let's see what we get when we divide that by 2. So I'm going to divide that by 2, and then I get a mole ratio of 1, 2, 5. So therefore, underneath here, I can say the mole ratio for this one is 1.25 moles. And how did I get that? If for sodium hydroxide, 2 moles is, is 2.5, the value of 1 mole is 1.25. Then what do you do now? Let me just use a different color. So I can then say the concentration for H2SO4 is also equal to N over V. I do have my concentration, it's 0 0.1. I do have my moles, I just calculated it as 1.25 all over my volume. Now you need to cross multiply. Remember, we needed to calculate the volume for the sulfuric acid. 1.25 multiplied by 1 will give me 1.25 and then I will get 0 0.1 V. If I want V by itself, you divide both sides with what is irritating the V. So this and this will cancel, and therefore V. See what we get here. If I have 1.25, I must divide that by 0 0.1, and then I get 12.5, exactly as I got on the other side. 12.5, remember this volume is in cubic centimeters. If you do need to actually convert it to cubic decimeters, you're going to divide that by a thousand. So those are two methods that you can actually do this equation in.